change the month in cell B2 to February and the days populate down column B and the dates in column A stopping at 29. The weekends are colored up green. I change that to March. Populates down to 31. You can see that and the weekend is still coloring green. So my name is Steve. Welcome to this session in Excel. What I want to do is basically show you how I've created this dynamic calendar. So I'm going to do that on a separate sheet. So sheet two, I've already got the grid sort of speed set up. What I need to do is create a data validation list for month and year. So I'll do the year one first because it's probably quicker. Now I could create a list of years and I could create a list of months and just select that. In fact, I will actually probably quicker than typing it. So if I just do Jan and then just pull that down to December, then I can use that as my list. And I'll just um, have a couple more in the next column, a couple of years. So 2024, 20, 2025, 20, 2026 20, will do for my list. So in the month box, I'm going to the data tab, data validation in the data tools area, data validation, and I want the list option, list, and then I need to select the list for the month, which is this list of months, and then click OK to that. Then I have a list of months, so I'll click on January, and I do the same for the year, data validation, select the list option, select the list, these three dates. If I format that as a table, this would grow as well, but that's a different sort of lesson. Click OK to that. And then I'll select the year, 2024. And then I've got the option to have a start date and a finish date in here. And I also want the conditional formatting to flag up the weekends, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, what I'm going to do first off is just put today's date in there. And then pull that down to get myself some dates. And then I want to use the text function to flag up what day of the week that is. So if I go equals text, open the bracket on the text, click on that cell. And then I want it formatted just as day, 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 like so. And then if I click the tick on that one, I can then just pull that down. If I go down to row. Um, Quite a way down actually, starting on row six, so I want 36. Um, no, it's just looking at A6. It's not picking anything up there, so I'll just leave that as it is. So I'll just fill that down actually, so it's, it comes up with some relevant dates. So I'm now highlighting this gridded area. Um, like so. So I'll tell you what I should do. I should do the first of the month. So if I go the first of the first, 24 and then that'll give me 31 days i'll pick that down that was a good guess 31 days i haven't got the grid on this bit so i'll just put that on there grid so i want to color this up so it comes up um green if it's the weekend so I'll do that first so I'll highlight that area back to the home tab conditional formatting manage rules down the bottom there new rule formula so i'm going to use the or function so i'm just typing or open the brackets so then i'm clicking on this cell and i need the dollar signs off the row number so i'm pressing f4 one two so it's on the b so if b six equals saturday comma or B6, F4, twice, equals, open quotes, Sunday, not Sun. If that's true, if either of those are true, format green. Format green, pick a green colour, click OK to that. OK to that. So you can see that works. If I change this date to today's date, so the sat today's the Saturday, so that changes over. And if I pull that down, that will also change over like so. Now, to get myself a start date, what I need to do is 
get myself up here and get a start date so it's basically going to look at whatever's in cell b2 and then the month b1 so i'm using the date function as you can see here so it's equals date press the tab key to get the bracket on so i'm looking at the year comma because that's the first part of the of the date function you can see it there look comma do a comma now i'm going to use the month function month pressing tab to get the brackets now i want the month that's in b1 but you can see i've got like a little and sign there little glue point so a one because i want that to show that as jan because if i don't it'll just come up with a, a number so i want it to be text so i'm just going to do that concatenation symbol which is shift and seven gives you the little and sign and then doing a one and i'm closing the bracket on the month comma and then back to the date function it's now wanting the day and i want this to be the first day of the month so close that bracket there like that tick that one and then so that's the first of january 2024 now this one i want the end of the month of this this here so if i then go equals end of month that's tab so i'm clicking on that cell comma now a minus one a minus one would be the previous month end of the previous month plus one plus one would be the end of the next month but if you put zero it will be the current month so i want zero and then i'm ticking that it's not formatted to a date so i need to format that to a date a short date so if i just check that works if i change that over to february this is a leap year it's coming in with that now what i what i want to do now is get these dates to look at the start and finish date so if i just delete these dates off for a minute just press delete now everything's gone green doesn't matter so this is a formula that i'm now going to use i'm going to use this if function with the rows function and i've got a part of the rows function fixed and part not fixed and i'm going to refer to this so let's try this so go equals if open bracket and then type rows open bracket so basically i'm in cell a6 so if a6 i'll just type a6 but i need to dollar sign it so i'm pressing f4 which locks the whole thing but if i press it again it's now just locking the six and then a colon a6 which is not dollar sign so if rows as you pull that down that's going to increment by one is greater than now i'm going to use the day function the day function which is going to come off the end date there look it's greater than the end date and i need to f4 that because i'm going to pull it down locking it if that's two so if, if that's true if the number of rows is greater than the end date which is 29 the day the 29th if that's true do nothing comma quote quote means do nothing if it's not true comma i want to dollar sign the start clicking on the start cell which is b3 that needs to be dollar signed looking the whole thing and then it needs to count so i'm using the rows to count how many come down so dollar sign b3 plus and then i'm doing the rows function again rows open the bracket a6 f4 f4 so it moves only the only the six is locked the column a is going to move down colon a6 close that bracket now i need to put a minus one on that because it'll just not count properly and if i tick that let's see if i've done that right so that's coming up with the first of feb if i pull that down double click that down because there's already been data down there you should see it going down to the 29th which it does and then if i change that to january that should come down to the 31st which it does so now, now that's working so the last thing i want to do 
is highlight all of this area and make it change color if there's any text in it let me just make sure i get the borders on all of that as well i'm going back to conditional formatting manage rules new rule and basically i'm going to select the second one down and if cell value is not blank if it's not blank i want it to go orange okay 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 so then you fill in something so i'll just have an appointment with bob it at 11 o'clock on that date and it goes orange you fill in another one so build or bill it just making these names up and that goes orange so there you go whichever month you select from the top it will give you the right number of dates and it will obviously i don't want that and i'd have to clear that off each month it would also tell you which are saturdays and sundays if there are like so have an appointment steve colors up orange so that's all i want to talk about in this little video how you can create a dynamic appointment calendar in excel so hopefully that was of use please subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one